Howdy Hank. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you what I do to prepare the head for the rivet. Um, I made it quite a bit uh, smaller and then I also put a bevel on it so that the solder could form a, form up around it. So I'm going to start this up. It'll be kind of noisy. So um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I just have this in a, you know, just in a drill, and I'm going to put it in reverse so that it's turning in opposite, this is turning this way, and this will be turning the same direction, which will, with both of them turning in the same direction, no, I want it, so it'll be in, no, Okay, I made that confusing. I've got the drill in reverse. Any kind, anything that you can turn, a, uh, that you can fix a sanding disc to or something will work for this. But I'm just going to turn it down. It's probably probably about three-eighths of an inch. Now the back side of it needs to have a taper on it. So I'm just gonna get over here and seem to want to focus. You see that it's got a bevel going back toward the, the stem of the rivet. Now I'm just going to deburr it. That's also cleaning it. For the soldering so if you don't touch it and get it oily from now on then it, you'll get a good joint okay now I do have a scotch bright wheel over here that's just kind of handy for cleaning up, cleaning the burr off and stuff, so let me do that. So now, so now with the, with the, let me tip this, well I'll just get down here. So now with the uh, head with that bevel on it and clean and three-eighths of an inch it's ready to solder. So I'll stop this video now and, and start a, and do another one. Okay Hank here we go. Um, this is uh, some OD, o, o -A -T -E -Y -O -T H20 um, water soluble paste flux worked well for this and I've just here's the disc yeah, got some crud on there need a cleaner brush okay then here's the here's the rivet I haven't touched the head of it and maybe, maybe with that, uh, maybe you can zoom in. I couldn't zoom in with this, with this phone. I'm using the front of the camera, the front camera, so I can kind of see what we're doing. But I'm just going to put some of the flux on it too. Now I'm going to float the flux on, I mean the solder, onto the, uh, onto the head first. Put a little more.
solar flux on there just for good luck. Now, hopefully you can see well enough what I'm doing, but the reason for that uh, taper on the head of the rivet is for flux to flow up over the top of it as well. I'm just going to dip the, the rivet in the flux. And because I just barely beveled that, it's clean, so that's ready to go. Set that down. This will probably be pretty loud, so maybe uh, it'll just be kind of self-explanatory. What I've got for um, solder is uh, some Stay Bright. This is silver bearing, um, but I think plumbing solder would probably work okay. Now that goes really liquid. What we want to do is have the, the metal itself melt the solder. There we go. And it's tinning out nicely. It pretty well covered a pretty good gob of it on there now this is going to cool it when I first put it on there and that flux is still liquid and that cooled it enough to uh, Harden it. It'll go fluid again, and the uh, rivet should set down pretty flat. There it went. But now, now the rivet and the see everything's fluid. This is where I need a better way to, uh, so I get started to harden up. I need a better way to center it on there. Yeah. Okay. So. There are the heads on there, and uh, you can kind of see how the solder flowed up around. It bit into that taper that, uh, that I ground into the head of that. So now I'm going to go over and clean it up. I'm going to put it back in the, in, the, uh, in the drill and just clean it up and polish it. Okay, so... Um, I'm back over here at the grinder. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm going to go grab my domer. These, um, these half inch discs are bigger than the domer quite a bit, actually. So... Um, let me just take a little off of the of the size of the diameter. That should be pretty good. Let's see what I'm doing there. It fits just about inside the, the domer. 
I'm suspecting it, it'll be best if it is exactly the size of kind of the outside of the domer. The domer has a little flat on it. Now I'm just going to clean it up. And that's a scotch bright uh, drum. And there's a nice satin finish on it. Now we'll just go over here to this buffer. Now it's shiny. That's all there is to it. Let me know if you have any questions. And that recentered it on the uh, on the rivet for me, so now everything's centered up. The uh, let me turn this off. The uh, the head fits that domer. It, it should set nicely. It it might need to be a tad smaller around, but. There's not a whole lot to it. Then if I, I can pre-dome it, um, you just have to set it in a like a piece of steel sheet with a hole in it the right size. And then because you can see how this is tapered out a little bit, it'll hit that and you'll be able to pre-dome it. And uh, I still, I think probably you can set it I know the stretch when you're doming it dulls it some, and so you can. I may I was able to uh, polish it with a Scott with a uh, sunshine cloth. You can get those from Rio Grande too, and a little black got on the leather, but some leather bleach cleaned that up just fine. So, but if you pre-dome them and then polish them, you shouldn't have to even monkey around with anything. You should be able to just set it uh, with like a piece of, oh, maybe five, six. I think probably a little safer would be some seven, eight ounce uh, leather. And, uh, and you're good to go. Okay, Hank, so I, uh, I tried something here that worked really well. Um, this is just a dapping block. And I used uh, one of the... The holes that, uh, well, that's probably the three-quarter inch. No, probably, yeah, that's got to be, there's the half. Half would make it too domed, so that must be uh, three-quarter anyway. Um, I just put it in there, and then I've got these uh, rivet sets that came from Bob Douglas. You probably have one. And... Uh, if you just put that in there like so, that domes it, and it doesn't bend or mess up. I tried it first without this, and I got you know, my the uh, rivet got a little bit bent. So um, the other thing, these are probably a there's a good chance that they could end up soft, and although this this is holding up pretty well. But uh, when you put the washers on, you got to be really careful. Um, it, I don't know, you may want to, uh, I don't think you'd need to drill out the washer. I set that one just fine, but I'd, I'd uh, maybe heat up a rivet before you uh, solder onto it and get, a, get an idea, a feel for how the, the, the uh, washers go on. But that came out with a perfect dome, and you can see what happens on the back side. What, what happens is the whole thing ends up flat. And so, you know, if you, when, when that gets set, you shouldn't have to do another single thing to it. And, uh, but you can see, maybe, maybe you can see that the, 
just that little bit of uh, working it took the shine off of off of that rivet head so I think it is a good idea to do this first and then polish them and then you'll have some really pretty rivets all right I think that's the whole kit and caboodle <laughs> okay one more little bit I just used the rivet setter to hold it while I went back to the buffer and uh, I can see myself in it so that's a pretty rivet I can't wait to use them on uh, on my own saddles <laughs>